So we've made it to BP level 30. We can choose one of the new weapons. I do want to quickly go over them, talk about their passives. Their main stats are all crit rate, just like the previous battle pass weapons, and that's always good. Though something you'll notice straight away is that some start with six, some start with four, some start with eight. And this, of course, directly changes their final stats once they are 90. And as weapons usually are, the base attack directly corresponds to how high or low the crit rate is. The higher the crit rate, the lower the base attack. The differences at level one don't seem that big, but let's take the two ends of the extreme like the top talking stick and the sacrificial jade here. At level 90, the talking stick will have 18.4% crit rate and 565 base attack, whereas the sacrificial jade will have 36.8% crit rate, double that of the talking stick, which is how they start out. The base attack of course suffers a lot, only being at 454. It is important to consider who you would give the weapon. Some characters don't care for the attack stat at all, but for the ones that do, the base attack is very important. This is of course not only the number of attack on the weapon, but it also determines the power of attack percent substats or main stats on artifacts. With the main stats out of the way, let's take a look at the passives. Wolf Fing here is a sword. It has pretty middle of the road stats here, six crit, 42 base attack. And this is a sword for characters who have multi-hit bursts or skills, preferably both. Not only will the damage of the skill and burst be increased, but you'll get stacking crit rate for your skill and burst up to four stacks. 8% at R1, 16% at R5. This already sounds like a very solid sword, but who can use it? The sword is very deep PSC not offering pretty much anything in the way of support. So it would go on a character primarily dealing damage with skill and burst. Kaya could probably use it decently well. His burst at least does last a while and hits multiple times, though I guess he can be considered a burst TPS similar to Lynette. If it wasn't for the free Cinnabar spindle, or if you don't have it, I think it could be used decently well on Albedo. The passive attacks from his skill last pretty much forever, so he'll always have that extra eight to 16 crit rate on it. It doesn't do anything for basic attacks, so for main DPSs like Ayaka or Kaching or whatever, there are just better options. So overall, it does sound like a good sword, but we have a lot of good four star swords. So it's a little bit hard to say like if it's best in slot for anyone. Talking Stick is a Claymore with low crit rate and high base attack. It has a pretty unique passive, increasing attack by 15% when affected by Pyro and all elemental damage bonus by 12% when affected by pretty much anything else. Being affected by Pyro is pretty easy if you have Binny in your team. There are other characters that can self apply most of these elements like any bloom team, you'll you'll get attacked by your own blooms and be affected by Dendro. And you only have to do that once every 15 seconds to keep these buffs up. So it shouldn't be that hard in an appropriate team. Could very well be a main DPS Claymore. I'd say it could be a solid weapon for Diluc. I'd be hesitant to recommend it for Eula because element damage bonus doesn't include physical. Would be okay for Dia, but she also scales with HP. And this weapon is heavy on the attack. If you don't have C6 Binny, I think Razor could use it decently well. Burst DPS Chongyun. I'm gonna check real quick if that actually affects anyone with cryo because I forgot at the moment. No, it actually doesn't. I still think the stats overall would be good for Chong Yun. He does scale with attack. He would appreciate the element damage bonus. Granted, there's someone else in the team that can imbue one of those elements. Could use Barbara for the hydro. Dory's burst affects you with electro, etc. There are quite a few characters that can affect other units with elements by now. I think it'd be solid for Sayu as well because as an animal character, she's rolling around, you know, interacting with a bunch of elements all the time. So while I've never really considered Sayu a DPS, I know some people do, so it's a consideration at least. Sacrificial Jade, again, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, tons of crit rate, low base attack. This one actually sounds really insane if there's a unit that can take advantage of it. 32% max HP increase when not on the field for more than five seconds and 40 elemental mastery. At R5, that'd be 64% max HP bonus and 80 elemental mastery. The effects will be canceled after the wielder has been on field for 10 seconds, but I'd say in most rotations, characters aren't out on the field for that long anyway. So this would be perfect for a Catalyst user that just scales with HP because it already has low base attack. In fact, it doesn't even need to necessarily be a Catalyst user that scales with HP. Just the base stats alone, the high crit, low base attack makes it insane for anyone that doesn't necessarily care about attack. Nahida comes to mind straight away because you do at least get a little bit of EM as well. That is, of course, if you're going for a Tri-Karma damage Nahida, otherwise she doesn't even really need crit rate. All the other damage type Catalyst do scale with attack primarily. I mean, there's some like Sucrose that want elemental mastery over attack, but for that, we do have four star catalyst with you know, main stat elemental mastery. This one's tough. It sounds like a really good weapon, but none can use it 
perfectly. Like, I think, I think Baiju could definitely use it fine. You know, I think their crit rate would be halfway a waste, but I mean, it's still a big HP boost. And even though, again, I think it would be all right for Nahida, there's also Wandering Even Star with Elemental Mastery main stat. But I mean, 36.8% crit rate on this weapon. That's a ton of crit rate. There's just no one that can use it perfectly right now. The only thing I can really imagine right now is that there's going to be a character in the future that can use this really well. Though that's not something to go on, it's just speculation. But right now we don't really have any HP DPS scaling. I mean, I guess Coco crit build, but like... That's a meme, isn't it? Anyway, Scion of the Blazing Sun, very much like Talking Stick, very low crit rate, very high base attack. This is essentially Linny's four star signature weapon. The passive is basically an extra attack when you do a charge attack and inflicts him with a debuff that makes him take 28% more charge attack damage. So it could of course be used for other characters that focus mainly on charge attacks, like Ganyu and Tignari. Tignari less so, of course, because of its very low crit rate and very high base attack. I mean, attack is fine for Tignari, but because of his passive, he does value elemental mastery more typically. And I just think it's not worth the trade-off of having very low crit rate for that big attack, like it might be for someone like Ganyu that really only cares about attack. And then of course, Linny's in the same shoes and it works even better for him because the low crit rate doesn't bother him that much as his new artifact set gives him a ton of crit rate anyway. So basically if you got Linny but didn't get his weapon, I'd say that would be a very good four star for him. And finally we have Ballad of the Fjords. This has pretty middle of the road stats as well, starting with six crit rate and 42 base attack. Very straightforward passive when there are at least three different elemental types in your party, elemental mastery will be increased by 120, which goes up to an actually incredibly impressive 240 elemental mastery at R5. That actually sounds very nice. There are quite a few characters that care about that amount of elements mastery, like Sean Ling in a national team for her vaporize, Hu Tao in general for Vaporize. And thankfully the requirement is only three different elemental types. So you could still have Binny with Sean Ling and it would still work. I have heard of like Max EM Shogun for certain Hyper Bloom comps. Although for the most part, I think Kuki Shinobu is generally more used in that regard. One of Sino's passives does give him boost based on his elemental mastery. So again, could be good for him as well. Overall, its stats are average and it gives actually a significant amount of elemental mastery. And outside of just having three different elemental types, there's nothing needed to trigger this it's just always there so i'd say this is the most versatile of the weapons it has a good amount of crit rate a good amount of base attack so as long as the unit you're giving this to cares about elemental mastery you know it's gonna be pretty good for them but yes in my personal opinion the best one is Sacrificial Jade. While no one can use it perfectly right now, I am just kind of banking on the fact that a little bit later on, we will get someone that can use it perfectly. I am almost certain with Five Star Catalyst included, this has the most crit rate of any Catalyst, which is kind of wild. And yes, the passive itself is a little niche, but a lot of Catalyst users do care about Element of Mastery at least. And I'm just kind of hoping at one point we will get like an HP scaling DPS that also, I guess, cares about Element of Mastery. But at R5, 64% HP, 80 EM. I'm torn between the Ballad and the Sacrificial Jade. If I didn't have Linny's signature, I would definitely think about getting a Scion of the Blazing Sun. These two seem like okay general weapons, but I'm not too interested in either of them, to be honest. But for me, I want to get Sacrificial Jade just because it has the most crit rate out of any catalyst, and I'm assuming later on we'll get a character that can actually use this well. So, we got it. Ultimately though, what you decide comes down to what you need. I don't really need anything since I just get everyone's signature weapon, so I'm kind of investing for a potential future character. I don't think there's an objective way to say what the best weapon is, but I think the one with the highest potential is the Jade. If you get a character that doesn't care about attack, but does care about HP, it's just cracked. With that said, make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below. Of the Battle Pass buyers, which one did you choose and why? Also, if you think there are some characters I missed that can use these weapons, feel free to leave that down there as well. But yeah, that'll do it. Leaving a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well thanks as always for watching and until next time